Hello, I'm Joey, and I'm here to talk about the Microsoft Xbox 360. There's a couple things I should do, not the least of which is shaving, but I think it's time I take time out and say happy birthday Microsoft Xbox 360. One of my favorite video game consoles, and definitely my favorite video game console of its generation, and generally considered to be the best video game console of its generation, might not be everybody's favorite, and it might technically not be the most successful in sales numbers. The original Nintendo Wii was the most successful. However, the Nintendo Wii, it appealed to people that normally didn't play video games. To be honest, if it didn't have backwards compatibility with GameCube, I probably wouldn't have liked the Nintendo Wii. I would have just viewed it as something to play Super Smash Brothers on and a few other novelty games. But the Xbox 360 was excellent. Personally, of the generation that includes Xbox 360, my top three games would include Super Smash Brothers Brawl for the Nintendo Wii, Bayonetta, which is generally known to be better on the Xbox 360 than the PlayStation 3, though it did have a good remake for the Wii U, and in addition to Bayonetta, Atari's Ghostbusters game, which is about the same on the Xbox 360 as the PlayStation 3. Yep. Those would be my top three games for the generation that included the Xbox 360. And two of them are Xbox 360 games that I prefer playing on the Xbox 360. Because I prefer the Xbox 360's controller. Well, that would be why I prefer Ghostbusters on the Xbox 360 over it on the PlayStation 3. Um, as for Bayonetta, it's just generally known for not being as good on the PlayStation 3, though I have less experience with, the, with that issue. But I do know it's pretty good on both the Xbox 360 and the Wii U. Though the Wii U technically is the beginning of the generation after the Xbox 360. Though, the Xbox 360 does continue on. And special mention for, well, a bad game. Special mention to bad game Sonic the Hedgehog. Sonic the Hedgehog 2006. What was special about it that I felt the urge to mention it? It was one of my first Xbox 360 games, and I actually did get some enjoyment out of it. Uh, incredibly glitchy, horrible controls. Controls that were not thought out well. Incredibly glitchy gameplay. Environments that were kind of lackluster. But it was the best character design ever used in a Sonic the Hedgehog game. The characters looked like they were right out of Fantasy Star or Final Fantasy. That was really impressive. I was impressed by that. And it actually had a story which had themes comparable to that of Bayonetta. Only where Bayonetta used adult humor, the Sonic the Hedgehog story was actually very poignant and thoughtful. Um, some people complained about the story. I'm not sure. I think they just didn't understand it. Probably because they were too busy being angered by horrible, horrible gameplay. Though after I got through the horrible gameplay, which reminded me of doing high school homework, which was just horrible, I was treated to what was unlocked. A three-hour awesome movie, which had depth, was poignant, intelligent, uh, a kick-ass soundtrack. Just horrible, horrible gameplay. A rushed Sonic the Hedgehog game, which unfortunately Sega became known for. But I always think of that game as one of the first games I got for the Xbox 360. Such horrible gameplay. But it was actually an attempt at something awesome. And if Sega hadn't hurried it and took a little bit more time to plan out the controls and work out the glitches, it could have been awesome. And to be honest, I it actually doesn't leave as bad a... It doesn't actually... You know, I just get this bad metaphoric taste in my mouth from playing Sonic Colors, and even Sonic Generations, although Sonic Generations had more enjoyable gameplay than Sonic Colors. <sighs> the new Sonic games, they feel like discount, discount bin rejects. Well, no, they... The new Sonic games feel like 
they're made to be tossed in the discount bin. They seem like they're worth about four ninety nine, and even then, kind of disappointing. Sonic Colors, Sonic Generations, the even Sonic, whatever, Sonic the Lost World, whatever. I, even that one was kind of disappointing. Sonic games don't get as much bad reviews now. But I think it's because they're aiming low. So at least it looks like they're hitting their target. Ugh. But, I actually got some entertainment out of that one. <laughs> I think of it as one of my first Xbox 360 games. Wow, but it was... That was really... I can't believe SAG even released that game. I always wish that they would re-release it with completely redone gameplay. Oh well. Super Smash Bros. Brawl along with Bayonetta and Ghostbusters, to me... Those were the top three games of the generation that included Xbox 360. And the Smash Brothers game, of course, is only on Nintendo consoles. And two of them were on the Xbox 360. Compared to a lot of the other game controllers from the time, it's my favorite. I didn't like it as much as the original Xbox controller. But I liked it a lot more than the controller S. It stuck the black and white buttons in a very annoying position where it was easy to bump them with part of your hand. I really hated the controller S, but I loved the original Xbox controller. The Xbox 360 controller didn't like it as much as the original Xbox controller, but it was a pretty good controller. I did like it. Um, what can I say about it? My favorite game system of the time, I didn't, overall I didn't like it as much as the original Xbox. I found the original Xbox's titles a little more interesting. Uh, that was more that was more characteristic of the time than anything. Games kind of took on a more generic feeling uh, as time went on. They became more and more influenced by Call of Duty and crap like that. And as such, the game industry get more and more boring to me. But I really liked the original Xbox, and the Xbox 360 was an excellent follow-up. Had partial backwards compatibility. Not as good a backwards compatibility as I would have liked. But the Xbox 360, it was an excellent game console. It is an excellent game console. Ten years later, ten years later, this November, it's got to be long past by the time I get around to uploading this. Well, maybe not long past, but over and done with by the time I get around to uploading this. But the Xbox 360 has hit a decade. A de <laughs> it's continuing on for a decade, which is pretty cool. It's actually not all that special. The original Xbox and the original GameCube faded away pretty quickly, actually. Uh, I mean, their lifespan was pretty short. Uh, 2001, on, then they're pretty much gone after 2005, which is kind of unfortunate because those were two of my favorite video game systems ever produced. The, the original Xbox, the GameCube, the Dreamcast, along with the Sega Genesis and the Super Nintendo. Those were some of my favorite video game consoles ever made with some of the lineups of games that were amongst my favorites. Uh, well, if you look at the other consoles, the Atari 2600, that was 1977 when that came about, and I think the last officially released title was something like 1991. Pretty good run. Nintendo Entertainment System, uh, known as the Famicom in Japan, it came around in, uh, I think it was 1983 in Japan, same year as the Sega, same day, exact same day as the Sega SG-1000. Uh, the Famicom was a lot more successful than any other console at its time, though. And I think it was only the SG-1000 was the only one that wasn't wiped off the market in Japan. But, the, I mean, I remember in 1994, there's still being new Nintendo Entertainment System games being produced. That console hung on for good reason. A console is a format. It's a specific, there's a specific controller you might like the style of. It's a format. There's a certain resolution. There's a certain color palette. And even with today's consoles, as advanced as they are, there are little differences. And it's nice to be able to play more games 
on the hardware that you like playing an existing library on. So, all the more reason to collect Xbox 360 games. Uh, it's definitely a console worth having. It had the red ring of death problem, where you'd have those three flashing red lights on the on the ring that normally would have four green lights make it the shape of a ring. Uh, I experienced that. Uh, Microsoft r replaced my console. Uh, I ha Every time they did it, there's always a thing in the instructions when you have your console repaired that to take off any of your accessories, just send the console itself. Any custom face plates, remove those. I thought to myself, well, they don't know what face plate I fa <coughs> excuse me face plate I have on mine. I'm keeping the original face plate that came with it, just uh, just because you know it's it's what came with my first one. <laughs> so I have three disembodied Xbox 360 face plates representing each one of the consoles that I had to have replaced by Microsoft. Then the fourth one, which is still on the console, after the warranty finally ran up so many years later, and then I got another Xbox 360 after that. So in a way I got five face plates. Uh, <laughs> because, well, they're just the plain white face plates, but because of how many times I had to have the Xbox 360 replaced because of that problem. But it was still an extremely successful console. That's how, that's how good it was, minus that mechanical flaw. That's how good it was. Even with a ridiculous flaw like that, it, it was successful. The Xbox 360 is one of history's best video game consoles. I'd say the best of its generation. And near the end of that generation, PlayStation 3 started to catch up a bit. But really, throughout that generation, the Xbox 360 was the game system to have. And I'm a fairly big fan of the Xbox lineup, although, for the most part, I prefer the original Xbox over the Xbox 360. And I have almost no interest in the Xbox One. Uh, eventually enough games will come out for it that I'll want one, but I don't know. I also don't have any interest in the PlayStation 4, its main competitor. But I'll probably get them eventually. But yeah, the Xbox 360, it was an excellent game console. During the last decade, it was probably the console I spent the most time playing. Last little bit I've been playing a little bit more, well definitely more, uh, Sega Genesis, Sega CD, Super Nintendo, those are the ones I've gone back to the most more recently. And even in the time of the Xbox 360, I spent a lot of time, I still continue to spend a lot of time with those consoles, and uh, also, and especially, uh, the original Xbox and the GameCube. Uh, I really like the Dreamcast, but I probably spent less time playing the Dreamcast in those years. Though at any given time, something might cause me to just start playing Dreamcast games again, because that is one of my favorite consoles. There's not much more I can say about it other than it was an excellent game console. The PlayStation 3 gets a lot of respect for me, because it has backwards compatibility with original PlayStation. Some of the models had backwards compatibility with PlayStation 2, which was also pretty cool. And the fact that, well, the Xbox One is announcing backwards compatibility with Xbox 360, but it's not really what I'd call true backwards compatibility. It involves too many... Well, you have to go online and download this, download that. It doesn't really sound like it's playing the data off your disk, and if it does, it's, it sounds strange. Now, the PlayStation 4 is apparently announcing that it's going to come out with backwards compatibility for PlayStation 2. So I'm actually leaning towards being more interested in the PlayStation 4, just because of backwards compatibility. You know, that novelty of playing, you know, the games you have on a previous console, on a on an other console, to me, that that's really cool. It makes your existing video game materials more interchangeable. So I, I don't know, PlayStation 4, Xbox One, it's hard to say, Xbox One has sun, Sunset Overdrive, the Xbox 360 you can still hook it up to a standard definition television. And that's important to me because the televisions I usually play my games on are standard definition televisions. 
So, yeah, let's hope the Xbox 360 sticks around for a while.